Good morning. On behalf of Gonzaga Preparatory School, I'd like to welcome students, faculty, staff, parents, alums, other guests, and those participating virtually to our celebration of the Mass of the Holy Spirit. Most Catholic schools, and especially Jesuit high schools and universities, celebrate the Mass of the Holy Spirit at the beginning of every school year. It is a tradition almost as old as the Society of Jesus itself, going back to the first Jesuit school in Messini, Sicily in 15, 1548. As we begin the 2020-2021 school year, we pray that the Holy Spirit continues to fill our hearts with wisdom and fire of God's love. At this time, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass by silencing our cell phones, ceasing all conversation, and intentionally being present to God around us. Please rise for the beginning of Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you so much. This is a really interesting time to be celebrating the Mass of the Holy Spirit, in many ways, you know, as appropriate as it gets. We've, uh, if people haven't been here all day, it's been sort of a heavy day at school, uh, various topics that we've had to talk about and so forth, which are wonderful and reminder of the need that we have for the guidance of the Spirit. That's what our deepest hope and faith is in, is that we're following a Spirit. That's how we know that we're on mission, and that is the Spirit that we're calling down to be with us during these most interesting, odd, um, unexpected times, is we need the, the strong foundation and knowledge that the Spirit is still with us and guiding us. So let's turn to God who's filled with mercy, who knows all of our weaknesses and failings, and still chooses to send his paraclete, to send uh, his defender to our aid, the Holy Spirit. You're sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord. And you came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Lord. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated now as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. They all look to you to give them food in due time. When they give it, 
When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you, came, when you became believers? They answered him, We have never heard that there is the Holy Spirit. He said, How were you baptized? They replied, With baptism of John. Paul then said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people of, to believe in the one who has come after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands on him, the Holy Spirit came upon them. The word of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Traconitus, and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the desert. He went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill made low. The winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all, they were, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. But John answered them, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. My sisters and brothers, the good news, the gospel of the Lord. So as I said at the beginning, it's, it's an interesting uh, sort of even feeling that I have after uh, spending a lot of time talking about the difficult issues of racism and so forth today to try to figure out where the Mass of the Holy Spirit, and I have total confidence uh, that it's in the exact right place it needs to be. Um, uh, let me just start by saying this, that uh, here's a word I know I... I, I I, I uh, it, try to introduce this word at many places on retreats, and I've done it here a couple times. It's a great word that helps us be able to talk about things like the Spirit. The word is ineffable. If it's not on the uh, English vocabulary list, it ought to be, because it's a great word, which simply means there is no words for what it is we're talking about, that there is no song beautiful enough to be sung, there's no poem beautiful enough, no metaphor perfect enough, no... Uh, words, no play, no nothing, things that can we can kind of get at it from various angles, but nothing will quite put a finger on what it is we're talking about. And the Spirit is one of those most obvious things, okay, that, it, that it's hard. And so we resort to images and metaphors, uh, as the Scripture does itself. 
Uh, we, we see in a different scripture passage about a dove that comes and descends upon Jesus at his baptism. Uh, tongues of flame coming down on the disciples at Pentecost. Uh, a, a mighty wind that both swept over the face of the deep at the beginning of Genesis and then through the, the upper room on Pentecost. Uh, there's lots of talk about soul, okay, things that have to do with spirit. Now, we give, give an absolute definition of that. It's going to be hard. I was talking to somebody the other day who said, I think of the Holy Spirit as my moral compass. It's what helps me decide what is right and what is wrong. It's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. It's not bad. So I've been thinking a little bit about that. What is it? Because uh, it seems like different things come to me every year because it, no matter what insight you get, it's not the whole thing. So it's rich with other insights that come with it. Um, and I've, I've preached on any number of sort of images of of the spirit. I, I even and someday maybe you can talk me into t giving you the homily someday about how the Holy Spirit is like the smell of bacon. I'll have to tell you about that someday. Uh, that's, that's a dandy. Um, but and there's there's a lot there but here's the thing. Um, let me just, I, I, my mind's sort of working on this as I go here a little bit because one of the things I think that's helpful, too, is not only coming up with some metaphors and images, but if you understand its opposite, sometimes it's helpful to know what it is, okay? And one of the things that Ignatian um, spirituality brings to the party, as it were, the theological party, is a confidence in a spirit of goodness, a spirit that leads and guides and instructs and fortifies and encourages us and leads us to the light, but with equal confidence, and only not with equal force, but with equal confidence that there is a contrary spirit. There's something that works against all that, okay? That there is, uh, Ignatius has a number of metaphors himself, a contrary spirit or a competitive spirit. The, the one I tend to use the most is, is uh, the enemy of our human nature. Whatever it is, every culture in the world has some version of this because we have a sense that there is something that is trying to darken the world, okay? But there is a light and a beacon that guides at all times. So uh, I, can, I, I think one of the examples I can use about that is just these last months of quarantine and, uh, you know, not knowing how, what we're doing sometimes, you know, and how to do it best and and all that in seeking for guidance. For, from where? I mean, who, who could you go to to ask, what do you do at a school during a pandemic? You know, who could we ask? There's no humans alive. I suppose there's something that you could look at. But, but what we do in a Catholic school in the Jesuit tradition is we go to the God of mercy and seek his spirit's movement. And, and, and I think I really feel that these weeks that we've been together, there's something about the re uh, or the reemergence re of students showing up, even though it's first quarter, you know, a, a quarter each day, and now half and half each day. There's something that feels like a spirit that's come back into our hallways. At least for me, there's so many friends. I just look out in the congregation now, and and also my colleagues. That is just like so refreshing. That's a great word to talk about what the Spirit does, is it refreshes. It's like a deep draw of cold, fresh water, okay, on an on a otherwise dry and, and difficult time. Um, just speaking of friends, I mean, I think friendship speaks to this in a way because and teaches us something about how the Trinity works. If nothing else, the Father, Son, and Spirit are friends. <laughs> they are bound together by a common love. Uh, which pours out in the spirit. Um, I wore today, so uh, I could also make a, an analogy that the Holy Spirit is like a mask. Okay, I could do lots of things with that. But this is one a good friend of mine, Susan, uh, sent to me that says, come Holy Spirit on it. So I wore it today just as a reminder of, of the, that, that we're not alone, that we're in this together. A and where does that come from? The Holy Spirit. Um, Here's the real metaphor I wanted to get to, though. I was, uh, oh, let's say two Saturdays ago, something like that, as I normally do on a Saturday morning. I'm sitting drinking coffee with my sister. We always catch up. She just lives down the block here. And we were watching from her front yard, because it was pleasant enough to do that, 
uh, as what looked to me like a storm front moving in. And we were kind of talking about it and didn't know. And then slowly the South Hill disappeared. And then pretty soon the steeples of St. Al's disappeared. And then it hit us, which I'm sure you're not surprised to find out was those billows of smoke that came rolling in from the Oregon fires. Not a bad metaphor for the enemy of darkness who rolls in, okay, and sort of settles in an oppressive way on us. At least that was my feeling, was it was so oppressive. We, you know, obviously we didn't last very long outside, but then you go inside and it was there too, you know, and, and we went home and I thought, well, certainly our, our great uh, HVAC system or whatever will we'll be able to get rid of, but not so. Walking through the halls, there's smoke. In my bedroom, there's there's nowhere to escape, and it's so pervasive and so um, almost, there's almost a cruelty about it. And then it was supposed to be gone in a day, and then two days, and three days, and four days, and it just kept on doing that. What I would like to suggest is that the Holy Spirit is like a breath of fresh air, okay? A breath of fresh air. Remember last Sunday, I think it was, when finally it was gone, and we'd been waiting and waiting for it to be gone. And suddenly one day the sun was out, the smell was gone, and you could just fill your lungs with freshness. With fr- it was like it was life-giving, much like the feeling I had when students started showing up in our lives. And it was life-giving. Life starts pulsing through. That is the spirit. It's like a breath of fresh air. Quite literally, in Hebrew, the word ruah is a word that refers to breath, God's breath, uh, uh, a Greek does the same thing. Pneuma is the word in Greek, you know, which means breath. God's breath breathing into us, giving us life when it seems so oppressive. And again, we've been dealing with really dark, difficult, painful topics today. And it can feel a little like that, that darkness. But in it, there is a freshness and there is a hope And there is a a, a sense of guidance that we're not left to wander on our own. That there is a spirit that God promised to each one of us. Uh, And and that's true here at PrEP. It's true here in everybody's individual lives. That there is a spirit that we can call on. uh, That that becomes a beacon in the dark or a beacon in the storm or a beacon in the the fire and the the smoke. Um, There is a hope that we are calling on right now at the beginning of this school year, that we have confidence will work, uh, work in, in, to, to help work out any of the issues that we have for good. Um, but we have to remember to turn to God. We so often feel like we can do things ourselves, and we just can't. There are things that are too big for us, but not too big for God. So we turn to the God of mercy. So let's pray this with all our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. Enkindle us with the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, O God, and we will be, we will be recreated, and you will renew the face of the earth. Having heard the word of God now and uh, spent a little time reflecting, let's now stand and bring our prayers to the Lord. For the people of God, that we may be renewed by the Spirit, so as to be faithful disciples in word and in action, that by our witness we prepare the way of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the leaders of the church and the world that they be guided by the spirit of wisdom to serve with justice, the good of all, most especially the poor and vulnerable among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that in this time of strife, the Lord might make straight the winding roads and make smooth the rough paths that lie before us, so that we shall see the salvation of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the Gonzaga Prep community, that we may be moved by the Holy Spirit to strive to bring about the kingdom of God by serving others with love and justice. 
we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they have enjoy the vision of God with those in heaven. We pray for the repose of the souls of those members of the Gonzaga Prep community that have gone before us into the light of God's face, most especially Terry K. Beard and Mitzi McAllen. We pray also for the souls of the over 900,000 who have died due to complications from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. For these and any prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Also, there is a box right here next to uh, the ammo that is filled with petitions that have been sent in to us ever since uh, March, really, um, that, that I bring to Mass every time I go to Mass, either at home or here, to offer them up that they might be offered. And there are many of those prayers that have been mentioned, but several others, so I want to pray for them. And I'd ask you to join me in praying for uh, a young friend, or not a terrible young, a friend of mine uh, named Sean Doneen, who is a core member of L'Arche. Some of you may have, if you're familiar with L'Arche, have known him as a little Down syndrome man, and he passed away a couple days ago. I've uh, just known him for years, so I ask you to pray for him as well. And so, Lord, we offer you these prayers, our hearts filled with confidence that your spirit is with us, that you care for us, and that you long to give us all those things that draw us more and more toward you. And so we ask you to gather all these prayers lovingly to your heart, bless each one of them, and answer them through Christ our Lord. How blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For it is through your goodness that we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the field and work of human hands, may it become for us the bread of life. We receive it together. How blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. You may receive us and be pleased with this sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite. Pray now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours might be made acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. Sanctify, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ the Lord. 
ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand. He poured out a promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout this whole world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Holy Father, with Thomas, our bishop, and with all the laity, clergy, and religious. Remember uh, all of our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Ignatius, Loyola, St. Aloysius, Gonzaga, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So now, the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share a sign of peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Soul of Christ, sanctify us. Body of Christ, save us. Blood of Christ, inebriate us. Water from the side of Christ, wash us. Passion of Christ, strengthen us. O good Jesus, hear us. Within your wounds, hide us. Suffer us never to be separated from thee. From the evil one, defend us, and in the hour of our death, call to us and bid us come unto thee. 
but with thy saints whom he made praise thee forever. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of his dew, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, is there anyone that needs to make announcements of any kind, or any other commentary, or grading the priest on how he did today, or anything like that? Okay. Awesome. Let's then stand, bow our heads, and pray for God's blessing. should have looked up ahead of time the blessing for the Holy Spirit, but I'm just going to pray it and trust God will think my words are okay. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in God's love and peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everybody.